So with the May sale now in full swing for worth, and I'm going to be going over some of my recommendations that I would recommend for getting in the sale. Now, once again, this is a recommendation. You don't really ever have to buy these, but I also asked you guys what you would recommend to other players whenever it comes to worth there. So I'll be including some of those as well in this video. Now, one thing I do want to note is that I tried my best, just time restraints, kind of just hit it, to go through every one of these vehicles and get gameplay for it, and also just kind of update my opinion on them. So some of them I just wasn't able to get to whenever it comes to that, and I will you guys know but but the first thing i want to start out with is vehicles that i'm personally going to buy through this worth and sell so the vehicles that i'm probably going to get is the to 55 it is a t55 8.0 with a flamethrower so it's a little bit different in that way but it should make the 8.0 lineup for russia just a lot better and then also the mig 15 bish ish i will be getting that one as well because it has been moved down to 8.0 it is basically a mig 15 bis but at 8.0 with a ccip on the rocket which just makes that thing really nice to play with whenever I've seen other people use it. But those two vehicles are the ones that I'm gonna be picking up the most throughout this sale. Now let's get on to the vehicles that I would recommend through my personal experience. So the first one is the Super Hellcat. The Super Hellcat is a staple for me, at least whenever it comes to War Thunder. It's a vehicle that I do pretty well in. It's a vehicle that is pretty good in the battle rating that it is at, at 6.3. It slots into the lineup very well. The other light tank that you have within the 6.3 lineup is the Walker Bulldog. And for me, at least, the Walker Bulldog, while it has more pin, the tank actually struggles with post-pin damage with the APDS, but for the Super Hellcat, it just nukes everything if you're on the side of it. If it's a Jag Tiger, easy kill on the side. If it's a Tiger 2H, it's an easy kill on the side. The only problem with the Super Hellcat is whenever you have to face one of those tanks from the front, and for me at least, I always use the rule of disengage. Every time you see something from the front, just to disengage from it and try to get into a better position to flank it. Now, there is a big thing whenever it comes to the Super Hellcat of if the 76 Hellcat or the M18 Hellcat is better than it, and for me at least, I prefer the Super Hellcat just because of the gun the 90 millimeter while on paper it's just a little bit different compared to the 76 the actual 90 mil does way better for post pin like yes at the same time you could shoot a 76 into the side of a tiger 2 it will most likely kill it but at the same time if you use the 90 mil you can be way less precise on where you actually need to aim you know most of the time if you're on the side you want to shoot for the back of, the of a tiger 2 but for the 90 mil you can center mass it if you're on the side of the tank and just completely destroy it so yeah the super l cat is one that I do recommend and then we're going to be going on to the next vehicle which actually complements the Super Hellcat which is the T20. So the T20 is what happens whenever you kind of combine a M18 Hellcat with a Sherman. I, best, I guess that's like the best way to put it but it's a really good vehicle. It's probably one of my favorite vehicles to play in the game and I do understand for some people it is too high of a battle rating but for me at least of someone who knows a lot of weak spots on tanks and knows how to really abuse this tank whenever it comes to its reload, whenever it comes to stabilizer and also its mobility special sense of reverse speed is way quicker than the Shermans this tank can do a lot of work now it's not going to be able to do the same thing as like just like pin the front of a Tiger 2 for example but making this vehicle kind of act like a light tank you can do really well in it and for me at least it is definitely one of my favorite tank the only downside really to it is it has no armor so you want to try to not get shot even if it's something that's even a lower battle rating stuff like the Tiger H1 can even pin this thing very reliably and Panthers and all that sort of stuff so it's a vehicle that you need to be very cautious while playing but it it can do amazing stuff whenever it comes to War Thunder. The next vehicle for America is the T114, and this is a weird tank for me because it's a vehicle that was recommended from you guys to actually play again, and I played it, and I don't particularly like it, but I understand why it can be really good. The difference between this vehicle and like a regular light tank is that you play the T114 like a rat. You want to stick in a position that nobody will ever know that you're in you're very small so you can be in very odd and weird positions and because it's at a battle rating of 7.7 .7, it is at a battle rating where if it gets an up tier it's just really poor to play as a natural light tank because you don't really have mobility and then also everything is just stabilized especially once you get above 8.3 everything just comes with a stabilizer so whenever you're facing a lot of tanks if you're moving around the corner they're moving around the corner easily they're just going to be able to shoot you so it's one of those vehicles you have to stick into like one position and kind of just play like a rat and wait for for people to come to you and for me at least it's not my play style but at the same time it is a really good tank if you can get it in a very good position the next vehicle we're going to looking at is the porsche tiger and the porsche tiger is a very interesting vehicle because on paper it seems very very strong you do get an increase in armor to the hull but the problem with the porsche tiger is that it creates a lot of weak spots on this tank 
And if you're a more advanced player or you kind of know where to aim whenever it comes to this vehicle, it's a vehicle that's super easy to take out. The Coppola is very easy to shoot at. And also if you angle the Porsche Tiger, you actually create yourself a weak spot that the enemy can actually shoot through and at least get rid of your driver and as well as maybe even your transmission. But the Porsche Tiger comes with the 88 millimeter, which is always just a really solid gun whenever it comes to War Thunder. And then also it's another vehicle that was recommended from you guys. And for me at least, it's a very huge pickup. It complements the 5.7 lineup very, very good and the only downside to it is, is once people actually know what to do versus the Porsche Tiger it is a very easy vehicle to actually take out. The next vehicle is for Germany still and it's the TAM 2 IP. The TAM 2 IP is the most average MBT you can find in a game. It's a 105 machine as the M33. It's just really good. The only really difference between every other 105 like Leopard clone within the game is that the armor for the TAM 2 IP is very trolly. The engine also eats a bunch of rounds especially if it's like APHG from like a D55 for example. The vehicle itself is just very, very good. You have a round that can really just deal with anything at the battle rating. It's up to your proof even with the M33 because it's just one of the best rounds that the 105 can get within that battle rating bracket. The really only downside I would say to the TAM 2 IP is that it is a light tank, which means that let's just say there's a Falcon going around. The Falcon, if it's on side on, it would just eat you up at the end of the day, I think. And it's one of those things that you kind of just have to realize is that even aircraft can gun you out sometimes. So it's kind of annoying in that aspect of things but at the same time the tam 2 ip will probably be my number one pick to grind out the german tech tree there's only i think four vehicles that you cannot grind with it because this is a rank six premium which means that you're only missing out on four vehicles so i know a lot of people like to go for the turns or like to go for the leopard to a four premium but at the same time i would highly recommend looking at the tam 2 tam 2 ip it's really good 9.0 it's at a really good battle rating bracket because even if it gets up tier to 10.0 it can only see a maximum of four 10.0 vehicle especially with the russian lineup going around and a lot of premiums like 2s38 in terms it is a godsend to just be a 9.0 vehicle the next vehicle is a little controversial in a way but i feel like it's a really good pickup even though it is a captured vehicle and it's for russia it's the m4a2 sherman so this vehicle is a pickup for me because i personally like the ability to kind of have a different play style compared to the t3045s the, the m4a2 just is a sherman it has gun depression it has a very quick reload it has a 76 has 50 cal top so i can shoot down planes it's just an overall really good little vehicle the only problem is it's a copy paste so if you played it in the american tech tree you know how it's already going to play and then also if you buy it in the russian tech tree you kind of have a vehicle that's going to play different you know it's it's good to have you can definitely put it up to probably like 6.0 just because of the stabilizer on it it's a really good brawler whenever it comes to the city maps and honestly i really do recommend it but i would only get it if it's on sale it's one of those like vehicles you buy if you want to in improve a lineup and for Russia improving the 5.3, 5.7 and 6.0 lineup is a really good thing with the M4A2. So the next vehicle is the 2S38. What else do I have to say? It's a really good jack of all trades vehicle. It can be a light tank. It can be a medium tank. It can be an SPA with the proxy rounds. It's just really good. I recently made a video on this vehicle in more depth. So if you want to go watch that, definitely do. The only thing to actually note about the 2S38 and it's something to note heavily is that Gaijin does plan on changing the internals of this tank so maybe in the future this vehicle can be completely different so be on the lookout for that if you buy this vehicle just realize that three months from now this vehicle might suck so it is something that you might need to you know take into effect of your purchasing decisions if this vehicle is going to be you no know, good or not within three months the only thing about it is and i will say this no matter what they do to the internals of this vehicle it's still going to be a pretty decent sba so it is definitely worth picking up just so you have like a third spawn or second spawn where you can bring it in with the proxy rounds and shoot down helicopters and shoot down plane it's still going to be pretty good at that whenever it comes to worth new. but the thing about it right now is is that it has very huge i would say buffs to its like damage that it can take you know sometimes it just doesn't spawn and it just doesn't want to die whenever he gets shot by enemy tank so the next vehicle is a vehicle that was recommended from you guys as well and it's the khalid the khalid is a very interesting vehicle because it's a chieftain that is an upgraded chieftain but upgraded in the fact of it has a better engine and then also it has l23 which is an apfs ds the only problem with the khalid and this is a huge problem with it is that it's about a rating of 9.3 which means currently that there's a sale going on and Russia has a really strong 10.0 lineup, you're going to get up tiered majority of the time in the Khalid. The Khalid is one of those vehicles that is not going to be bought out a ton, so you're just going to get up tiered. Uh, it's one of those 
things that you kind of just have to realize. And for me, at least, if I'm going to buy the Khalid, it's one of those vehicles I buy right now while it's on sale. And then in the future, I'm, I'm going to be like, okay, I'll play it in like two to three weeks once the sale kind of like dissipates and people quit spamming out the premiums that they currently bought. So the Khalid is still a really good tank. The L23, though, is pretty poor, especially facing off with the CT72 terms, because the only two spots you can pin it from the front is through the driver's hatch or the gun breach of the T72 terms. So, or the lower plate if you can go for that one. But the, the thing about it is, is L23 versus T72 type vehicles is pretty poor, but every other vehicle that you face, it should do pretty well at the end of the day. So I do recommend a Khalid. Just don't play it there in the cell or you will suffer. The next vehicle I have on the list is the Chinu 2. The Chinu 2 for Japan is a really solid mid-tier premium. It's like you take a Panzer IV and you give it just a little bit better of a gun. Now, it doesn't have a, a like capped shell at all. It, don't, it is only an APHE, so that kind of is a downside to it. But at the same time, the Chinu 2 is what I consider the KV-1 killer. This thing can delete KV-1s, KV-2s, any of the heavy tanks that you see around the lower tiers of War Thunder, Churchills even. It is a vehicle that just has a really punchy gun even though it doesn't have any armor to actually back it up, the Chinu 2 is still a really good mid-tier premium for Japan. So for Italy, we're going to combine two vehicles, which is going to be the Italian Sherman and the Panzer IV premium that they can get. Both of these vehicles are just really good. The reason I like both of these premiums is because they're rank 3, which means they can do daily specials and they can also do events if you really want them to. The only problem is the Sherman is the castle version, so it can't really take a shot whenever it comes to actually defeating anything, but the Panzer IV, it's basically Go the same one did you find in the German texture. So both of these tanks very much complement each other, which means I would highly pick both of them up whenever you're actually buying these premium. So the next vehicle is the OF40 MTCA. And as I've said with the TAM2 IP, this vehicle is just a Leopard 1 clone whenever it comes to the end of the day of things. It does have a negative compared to the TAM2 IP though, is that it doesn't have DM33. It only has DM23, which means that it is a little bit of a struggle going through some of the tougher opponents like T72 twos and as well as just like t64b for example but at the end of the day of things the mtca is just really good it's a little bit better than the tech tree equivalent because it has a better engine but it is just a leopard one clone with a 105 millimeter cannon there's really not much to say about it once you played one vehicle with a 105 you basically played them all so it's a really good grinder it can do the italian tree very very well and it would be my recommendation to get a vehicle for italy it is a vehicle that also has a pretty good lineup with it as well also do take that into effect as well so next we have another one of my favorite vehicles within the game which is the m41a3 this is a vehicle for china and it's a walker bulldog at a battle rating of 5.3 and you may say dog that seems like a very low battle rating for this thing and it is but this vehicle does not have apds so the only ram that you have is an ap shell which means that you have to make your shots count a lot but i really love that this vehicle is able to be maneuverable and kind of just go around the map now there is a big thing of saying if this vehicle is better than like an m18 for example but at the same time i really enjoyed this vehicle it's really fun to play the gun can sometimes be very trolly and not towards the enemy towards you because as you know it's just an ap round and ap just seems to do some weird and wonky wonderful things when it comes to worth in there so it's one thing to actually kind of you know get in a recognition for it but at the same time the m41a3 really good it's a really good grinder it is ranked three i do believe as well so you're able to do daily specials and all kind of stuff with china and it kind of just fits into worth in there very well so the next vehicle we have is the Swedish Sherman. And the Swedish Sherman, I do have to say one thing, and I want to apply this to the Italian Sherman and the Panzer IV as well. There's an event for War Thunder going on right now. So everyone is playing KV-1E, everyone's playing KV-1B. So these things are just terrible to play right now. But whenever the event's gone, the Swedish Sherman should be pretty good. The differences between the other Shermans is this one is a welded hole Sherman, but it does not have the MG port in the front, which means it's a weak spot as that you took away from the tank. So it is just really good. It's a Sherman. If you played one Sherman with the 75 on it, you played them all basically, and it is really good to pick up for the 3.7 lineup, especially if you can get the SAV and other 3.7 vehicles for Sweden. That lineup is just really solid whenever there's not an event going around. So, and then finally, we're to the G aircraft. Now, for aircraft, I'm doing this based on like a ground RB performance. I'm not really doing it as a air RB performance. The first one is going to be the A2D1. This vehicle is just really good at destroying anything that you want to. You get a 4,000 pound bomb on the front, and then also you get two 2,000 pound bombs whenever it comes to the wing tips. Now, the thing about the A2D1, it's a really good vehicle for destroying very tough opponents like mouses, destroying IS6s, destroying 
targets that you just feel like your team can't really kill. And the 4,000 pound bomb, especially if you see people capping like a capture point or something, can do really well. The only problem with the A2D1 is after you take away the fact that it has a really good bomb load, almost everything else about it is pretty mediocre. Except for the top speed, it can pretty much outrun any prop within the game. But the top speed of the thing is the only good side to the vehicle. It turns very sluggishly. It can't really do much whenever it comes to actually dogfighting. If you find like a BF109 K4, you better just try to outrun it and try to see if you can get him into a head-on or something. Because as soon as you start turning with the A2D1, you just lose all your energy and you're dead. And it's one of those things that people don't realize with A2D1 is you need to keep energy with it. You cannot afford to lose any because once you do, people are going to get on your tail and there's nothing you can do to shake them. Except for maybe try to dive and get a little bit more speed. But the A2D1, really good cast playing for America. It slots into the American lineup a 7.0 really well. You get stuff like the T29 as well as there as well and we'll cover that in another video but the A2D1 definitely is a pretty good pickup. The next vehicle is the Doe 335B2. This is just a solid vehicle to put in the 5.7 lineup for Germany. It has the 30mm MK 103s which just eat everything for breakfast if it's got no armor. M18s, Shermans, T30 45s. This vehicle just completely annihilates them. If It's like the A10 of World War II. It's the best, basically the best way to put this thing. It's really good at doing that. It has really good energy retention whenever it comes to coming out of a dive from it it is pretty quick so you can outrun a lot of vehicles it does have the same problem as the a2d as soon as you start turning with this thing and it's in fighter or something you're not really getting away from it after that you have to keep energy in these things that's the big thing that i want to promote of these vehicles is try your best not to lose energy because once you do you're just a sitting duck and there's really nothing else you can do about those vehicles the last one for this video is i'm going to recommend the hellcat mark ii for britain and the reason i say this is because it's a vehicle that's rank three that has access to three tiny tims and whenever there's a event going on or like a battle pass task where you need to get high caliber rocket kills those three tiny tims can easily eat up a bunch of those vehicles at 3.0 so it's a really good vehicle the outcome mark ii sadly don't have a gameplay for it but it's an honorable mentioned that i really want to put in towards this video so what do you guys think is there anything that you would recommend to other players Re remember to read some of the comments from people who actually you know recommended me to play some of these sort of vehicles i've tried to get as many of them as i could but as we know the sales kind of just appeared upon us today so it is definitely one of those things i kind of just had to stop where i'm at and you know get into making the video so hope everyone has a wonderful day and we'll see you guys in the next war thunder video